Don, I love these FQXI conferences. We deal with such fundamental issues, multiverse and time and information. We're at this conference now talking about observers and events, but one of the categories that we're talking about is what exists. It is really one of my favorite questions because it allows you to get this big, get your arms around everything and maybe there's something you're missing. You just keep going out and out and out. Some of the people I'm talking to here are physicists. When I ask them what exists, they talk about quantum wave functions and that's all they talk about. I mean, that's the only thing they think exists. I think you have, a, you have a bigger version of what things exist in all reality. Yes, okay. Well, of course, there, there's the platonic existence of, of logical truths, such as mathematical theorems, but let me go on to the things that I don't believe are logically necessary. But I guess for me as a Christian, first I would believe in God, and God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so that's I, a category of, of God. Yes, yeah, so there'd be a category. So there's a category of God, and there's a category of, of of the universe or multiverse, and then there's a category of other things that God may have may have created. So there's there's like three categories, okay. and and I guess within this, I might say, well, for God, I think there's there there's a benevolence of an. You might even say using that that sort of an ethical requirement to create the best possible world consistent with His nature. And then there's, I believe, omniscience of knowing what the best okay, would so that, be. Okay, so that's a God category. And, right. And, and there's one in it uh, that may right. have three persons in Christian religion right. or however you think about that. Uh, is there anything else in that category but God or that's a separate, that's its own category? Well, it's, it's yeah, I think it, I would say that it's, it, 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 you know, it's its own okay. category. All right, so that's one. Uh, the second you say is, is the multiverse in some sense, you know, the physical existence. Right, and for, for that, I, here I'm sort of laying out the, what I is the primary existences, and so I, I think in some sense I think most primary are the sentient experiences we have, that the consciousness we have, and then I, I but I do believe that the way that this is connected with with physics is that for each sentient experience, for a sentient experience being a conscious perception or all that we're aware of at once, for each one of those, there's what we call in quantum theory a positive quantum operator. Now that's a little bit of an abstract thing, but the idea is that there's a third thing, third fundamental thing for the universe, and that is the quantum state of the universe or multiverse. And this quantum state then gives what we call expectation values to operators. It, it, it allows you to get a number for each. And I would interpret it for these operators, for each one that, that is, is corresponding to a sentient experience, then th this expectation value would say would, would give the measure of that, would give to, to what extent it, it, it occurs. And so, for example, I know from introspection that, that I have sentient experiences, and I very strongly believe that you and other humans also do, and I believe pets do, and uh, higher animals, and, and probably to a lower degree even the lower ones. But, I might think, for example, of ants. There are far more ants than humans, but yet I suspect that the measure for each ant perception is much lower than that for each human perception. So that the, 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 the total reality or the total measure for human perceptions is, I suspect, higher or at least not much lower. So, so these are all in your second category. Yes, yeah, so this is in the second category. And so where you had first said multiverse, what you really mean more complex is the sentient experience, uh, almost a, a creation in a way of, of the multiverse. But God created it, so you have right, a God yes. category now, the multiverse category in all of its different ways, but uh, interacting with sentient experience. Yes. And you can't have a multiverse without the sentient experience, God, I suppose, in, in your uh, worldview, created both the sentient experience and the opportunity to have it with the, with the, with the multiverse. Yes, I think God, if God wanted to, he could create a, a multiverse or universe with no sentient experience. Uh, I don't know whether he would have a motivation to do that, but it right. seems like he's created one with sentient experience, and therefore I, I tend to think that he has, for him, it's a high value of, of creating something with sentient experience, but also high value of creating something that's very elegant. So what's, what, what's very interesting to me is that you did not separate out consciousness and the multiverse as two separate categories that God created, but you in fact had them as one category. Yes, I believe that they're very strongly related. We don't, we don't know the laws of psychophysical parallelism. How do you get from one? As I say, I have a framework where it's expectation values of operators that give the measure of conscious perceptions. That's a framework, but not a theory. 
theory because I don't know what these operators are. Right. Some people would say, who believe in God, that God created consciousness separately. Some people say consciousness is the only fundamental thing. There is no God or consciousness created God in some way. But I just want to understand that your right. concept of consciousness is, is in the same category as the all of the physical experiences in, in this very broad sense of a multiverse and time and space and potentially a multiverse and quantum physics as well. Yes, that's true. Although, you know, I do believe God, in a sense, has his own consciousness, which probably has quite a bit different character from ours. And okay, I, but that's in the God category. Yeah, right, that's in the God category. Okay. But there's, of course, a, there's this third category of other things God so, might create. So what's, what's and in I that? I do believe that Jesus has promised that they'll be created new heavens and new earth, and then they will, they will have us resurrected in, in that. And we don't know what the, what the, what the physical laws are like that or the, or the physics, but I, you know, I do believe that there's going to be something like sentient experiences there. Okay, Maybe so the physics will be different. What other things have God created? I mean, we, people talk about angels, people talk about different realms of, uh, of, 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 of non-physical spaces, people uh, talk about uh, platonic objects. Uh, is, is, is all that stuff in the other category? Well, I think there would be, all, I mean, there's various possibilities, and of course, I don't know what, what God has created. Now, I will say, I guess, by my own view, this platonic thing of, of mathematical truths, I think that they just exist as logical necessities, and they, they can't be created or destroyed. So those things, I, I think, have, well, sort okay. of a fuzzy existence, but they're a, it, that's apart from God, and they, okay. it, 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 they, they have their, their sort of abstract existence independent of, of God. That's at least my own personal view. Now, of course, God can use them, but... Anyway, so I believe, yeah, God and our, our universe and then other, other entities that God has created.